I got this inspiration uh, to write, to tell the story of what happened between Mary and Joseph, because that's a part of the story that a lot of us don't know about. You know, the Bible just said there was a virgin, you know, divine conception, and then she gave back. And I started imagining what that story was being told in 2020, 2014, when, when it was written, 2013, when we started thinking about it, writing it. And it was like, okay, so if I was Joseph, how would I react? If I was Mary, you know, how would it sound? If I was living with them, if I was their neighbor, and I was living in their time, but I don't feel like it's a bit crazy. Tonight is our opening night. I can say more, more like our dress and tech, actually. And the reaction of the audience in the room was electric. So I think it's a, you know, it's a, it's a story well told. It's a story that is well received. For me, why I wrote the story, I want to tell a different, I want to tell a story about the love of God. First of all, I'd, I'd say the, the main idea came from the script itself. Because uh, when I first got the script and I, I read it, it was, uh, it, it was in Pidgin English. So I felt like, okay, Pidgin English, this, I've not seen it before. I know it, somewhere it must have existed, but I've not seen it before. So I thought, okay, if it's going to be in Pidgin English, why don't we create a fantastical world of our, of our own? So really, I will say, yeah, the script itself just told me what it wanted and I obeyed. Mary, sorry to say I don't believe you before. You're doing your work, but I still won't marry you. Most of the work went into the first show. That was the maiden show. We had a lot of conversation. So this time it was just like we were refreshing our memory, right? So it was, it was more or less like what we had done before, but with a little tweaks here and there, so it, it was chilled, it was good. This show is tagged the greatest tale of love ever told. So we want people to know that God is love, Jesus is love, so because love prevails over all things. Basically, that's the, that's the basic theme of it, love. There was a lot of like, having to truly internalize the story more than the way I had known it. You know, it's, story, it's a story you've heard over and over again, so a lot of times you, it looks like something that is far, so far away. But play, having to play the character, I had to put myself in the shoes of somebody who didn't have sex, didn't do anything, and you're just pregnant. And then having to be in a community where that is an abomination or people look at you a certain way. And still holding on faith that hey, I didn't do nothing wrong and uh, this dream happened to me and I'm holding on to that dream. That So I'm, I'm sure it must have been a very confusing time for her. So they, I had to take myself through that whole journey of how she feels behind the scene because it's her story. And that's how I arrived at Play Mary. Now, best way to carry they do like this, so. Now, what would be? Best way to carry the leg. Carry which the leg? Then, when Jesus was born, there are some things we have now that they didn't have then. So bringing it down to the modern day and the Nigerian home, how we react to situations like this, the miracles and all that. So I had to put it like a normal mom, modern day mom will react. A modern day mom will, uh, having an only daughter, how she reacts, how she will act, how she will respond. I'm being a mom as well. I was able to put something together to put the character together and just try. And when I was much younger, when I'm, when you fall sick, the first thing moms want to do is let's check is she pregnant. When it was when was the last time you saw your? <laughs> so that's how it is. saw the show last year as an audience member so I had a pretty good idea of the story and in the past in the different production I played Joseph so it's interesting it was interesting for me being on the other side of that experience where you are the bearer of good news and in this play I like to refer to Gebu in this show as 
the heavenly agbero, <laughs> the agbero of heaven, and you know he's the bearer of good news, you know. Um, but you also have to keep in mind that this good news can be hard to take, <laughs> you know. So you have to package it well and all of that. So for me, it was just how do you embody the heralding of great news, you know, news that is going to change the world.